<laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, sorry, we're just a little slow getting going here uh, as people are joining. I uh, want to give it a couple more minutes, get a few people on, and then, then we'll begin. Uh, bienvenidos a todos. Uh, esperamos uh, cuantos minutos para otros y uh, empezaremos uh, soon. Vale, uh, let's, uh, let's get going. Uh, buenos días, uh, bienvenido a todos a la webinar informacional uh, para PRECAP del uh, Puerto Rico Energy Capital Access Program. Uh, soy uh, Tomás King, uh, el uh, director fundador y uh, instructor principal de la programa. Uh, de la, después de estas introducciones, um, la uh, presentación uh, uh, estará en uh, inglés uh, para dos razones. Uh, primero es uh, mi español, uh, a pesar de que uh, he sido hablándolo más que 40 años, uh, es uh, destreza es limitada. Y uh, la otra es uh, porque uh, inglés es el idioma de financiamiento y la mayoría del de, uh, curso de uh, PreCap uh, está enseñado en inglés. Um, pero uh, uh, no preocupen porque Uh, la mayoría de los uh, instructores y mentores um, son uh, bilingüe y uh, uh, proveeremos uh, apoyo para uh, la, digamos, y de los documentos, uh, informaciones y uh, contratos y, y otros. Uh, bueno. Ok. Uh, Quick welcome and uh, a quick introduction to the, the webinar agenda today. Uh, we're going to uh, quickly go through uh, the status of the market and the opportunities and the obstacles to uh, transforming uh, Puerto Rico's energy infrastructure and the role that our program is seeking to fill in uh, addressing these needs and delivering uh, access to capital to projects in Puerto Rico. Uh, we have a, uh, a quick overview. Uh, we have some feedback from the members of our first cohort uh, who are uh, either uh, recorded or here on the call to, uh, to talk to you. And uh, we'll be discussing our second cohort, uh, which is coming up later this year, beginning in September, and the application and qualification process for uh, joining us in the uh, second. Uh, cohort. 
So uh, la Fundación Borincana um, uh, empecé uh, esta empresa sin fines de lucro uh, en uh, 2018 para uh, enfoque en uh, determinar y acelerar la transformación energética de Puerto Rico. Um, I started this up in 2018 after the, uh, the hurricanes to focus on the transformation and uh, acceleration guiding the, the change in the uh, energy infrastructure in, in Puerto Rico. Uh, so quickly, just to, to go through the team uh, that's working and you'll hear from, from some of these people today. Uh, myself, just uh, uh, sort of quickly introduce myself. Uh, I have a, a background in uh, investments and uh, financing and consulting for energy uh, for more than 30 years. And uh, among other things was the, the founder of US Renewables Groups, which was one of the first uh, pure play uh, private equity groups focused on renewable energy, clean fuels and related infrastructure. Uh, and I have an association with Puerto Rico uh, on the renewable energy side uh, that goes back uh, more than the 10 years. Uh, Maria de los Angeles Medina uh, is our uh, program manager. Um, she, you will not hear from her today. Uh, she is also a reservist with FEMA. And when the coronavirus epidemic uh, came up, she was, she was called into action, a bit like the National Guard. And so she is serving uh, Puerto Rico, uh, working with FEMA uh, in response to the coronavirus epidemic. Uh, David Alvarez uh, Gider is our uh, program associate, and Valentina uh, is our uh, program analyst. And uh, actually, I'd like to, if, if either one of you could unmute briefly and just give a, a quick introduction of yourselves, uh, that, would, that would be helpful. David, maybe you should go first. Sure. Uh, thank you, Tom. Can you hear me all right? I can. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for being on the call today. My name is David Alvarez Gider. Um, I have roots in Puerto Rico and grew up in the States um, and worked on a lot of sustainable development and startup um, projects out in Silicon Valley after um, living out there for a long time. And I've been coming back and forth to Puerto Rico for uh, the last like five to seven years, um, really tr promoting a sustainable development agenda and wanting to work more within the startup and innovation communities. And uh, this has been a really great way to actually um, work at the intersection of community and infrastructure. And so I'm excited about our cohort and, and the, the things that we get to learn in this process. So happy to be here. Great, terrific. And uh, Valentina? Sí. Buenos días a todos. ¿Me escuchan? ¿Me escuchan bien? Perfecto. Buenos días, bienvenidos, muchas gracias por estar con nosotros en la mañana de hoy. Mi nombre es Valentina Garramuño. Eh, el background, mi background profesional es, eh, soy gerente ambiental en manejo y conservación de recursos naturales y por los últimos años me he especializado en el tema de desarrollo sostenible comunitario, que es lo que más me apasiona trabajar. Eh, y estoy en este momento eh, colaborando con Fundación Borincana, eh, al igual que David, con mucho entusiasmo respecto a el trabajo que es posible hacer en Puerto Rico para crear una infraestructura energética resiliente, para eh, crear también una infraestructura energética limpia eh, y basada ¿verdad? en las necesidades que tiene eh, la sociedad puertorriqueña en este momento. Gracias, Valentina. Okay, so uh, first today we wanted to cover a little bit about uh, where, where we are in, in Puerto Rico. So Puerto Rico represents an, an incredible opportunity uh, to, to move forward and, and create economic development and security and resiliency and also become a model of change for the rest of the world. Uh, Puerto Rico uh, is going through the transformation that much of the world is going through from uh, one form of energy infrastructure into another. It's just the conditions in Puerto Rico will allow it to move farther and faster than many other places in the world. Uh, Puerto Rico has a strong new energy policy, Act 17, uh, which enables, uh, among other things, new regulation and uh, 
uh, guides the, the transformation of the infrastructure into one that's based on, uh, on performance uh, rather than rigid guidelines. Uh, energy regulation is developing. Uh, that is, in some ways, uh, a strength and a weakness in that it's not there already. But the fact is, is that Puerto Rico has the opportunity to set regulation and uh, regulatory policy uh, to support a, a, a new uh, transformed energy infrastructure. Uh, Puerto Rico as a market uh, has great potential advantages, uh, very different from uh, markets in other parts of the world. Uh, there is hardly a single Puerto Rican citizen who does not understand uh, the value of distributed generation and storage uh, as a, a means of resiliency and the importance of that to uh, community and economic development. Uh, that means that as a market, uh, you are uh, much more attractive uh, potential for uh, investing in, in new infrastructure because you don't have to overcome the hurdles that uh, uh, stop other groups from, uh, from investing in, in other areas. Uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, I like to say uh, the incentives uh, are, are pulling in that direction. Um, in other markets, you get something like it's not broken, don't fix it. In Puerto Rico, uh, not only do you not have that option, we must uh, change and change for the better. So very interesting. Um, Puerto Rico is uh, U.S. laws, courts, and currency. And why that, well, that might not be welcomed by all. Uh, it is certainly an advantage in terms of uh, financing and, uh, and investment. The uh, active institutional support uh, for transformation and investment is quite different in Puerto Rico, um, along the lines of uh, you know, fixing it. In, in other uh, locations, the regulator, the politicians, the customers, uh, the utilities are, are all moving slowly. Uh, they're resistant to change. In, in Puerto Rico, uh, it's just the opposite. Uh, however, uh, there are challenges uh, still facing Puerto Rico, uh, including, obviously, uh, the ongoing bankruptcy. Uh, there's a, a Puerto Rico lives in a political gray area, um, but it's also suffered from other things that affect the, the pace and ability to invest and grow uh, new energy in Puerto Rico. Among them are uh, chronically weak uh, financial markets. The, uh, advantages and the pathways and opportunities that uh, someone in uh, Delaware uh, or New York or Missouri has in relation to uh, financing and being able to uh, attract investment, th those sort of markets just don't exist in the same way in Puerto Rico. And it, it's one of the things that uh, as a, uh, a foundation that you know, we, we seek to uh, develop and change. And in a little way, th this program addresses that as well. Uh, there's similarly deficits in uh, pathways and, and common structures that are understood. And there's also uh, a lack of uh, general understanding about the principles of uh, development and finance uh, and the skills and experiences in, in Puerto Rico in order to uh, achieve these. These are, these are all solvable problems and uh, problems that uh, we in the Fundacion and with the uh, PreCAP program are looking to address, at least insofar as uh, access to capital for energy uh, infrastructure investment. So uh, one of the first important things to understand is the way that uh, external capital uh, and investment uh, is currently looking at, at Puerto Rico. And uh, I, I like to say that uh, uh, four of these are actually partly true and two of them just are not relatively true. Um, Puerto Rico uh, is blamed for being corrupt, but in truth, it's no more corrupt than anywhere else in, uh, in the United States. Um, there are certain ways of doing business. There are certain historical things that make it difficult, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a label that is, uh, in my opinion, not, uh, not justified. Uh, Puerto Rico suffers from a very high relative level of poverty, 
uh, which leads uh, investors, capital sources on the outside to think about it as, as can't pay, won't pay. Um, this, is, this is just not true. Uh, when you look at uh, defaults and recoveries, uh, especially in relation to uh, payment for uh, utilities, uh, you know, car payments, and a few other things in, in that structure, uh, Puerto Rico does not uh, compare unfavorably uh, with uh, with other jurisdictions. Uh, unfortunately, these are the the types of of labels that uh, that we have to overcome. Uh, lack of expertise. There's definitely some truth there. Uh, it's difficult or too hard to do business in Puerto Rico. Uh, it has been. Uh, new laws and regulations are are making it uh, much easier. Uh, there's no scale. Investors, especially when they're coming into a market. Uh, your market in Puerto Rico or our market in Puerto Rico is uh, one of many that uh, investors, lenders can choose to, to work with and they like to be able to have uh, visibility into the ability to make investments. Uh, there's little interest among uh, investors and lenders in, in you know, working very hard to develop and understand the market without a certain level of uh, certainty that they will be able to put uh, their investment uh, and their effort eventually to, to make an investment or make a loan that will be uh, secure and profitable. So these are, again, challenges, but challenges that can be, can be overcome and that the, the program uh, is, is meant to work to help overcome uh, in, in relation to uh, energy infrastructure investment. So what we need to project and demonstrate uh, to investors and sources of capital is that the, the developers, the proponents of these projects are credible and knowledgeable uh, about their projects, about the needs uh, of the lenders, about the conditions. Uh, you don't have to have uh, all of the answers, uh, but I like to say you need to know all of the questions. And you need to be able to understand and relate that to uh, potential sources. Because of the perceptions, because of the, the lack of scale, because of uh, the lack of a track record uh, of investment, um, we need to be better. Uh, we, we need to uh, exceed the expectations of capital. Uh, we need to demonstrate that the credit profile uh, of the, the project, of the investment, of the counterparty, is uh, superior uh, to perceptions and superior to what uh, investors may find in, in other markets. Uh, we need to build scale. And a simple uh, explanation of this is that a, a, a $1 million one-off project is, is not very interesting to uh, you know, large amounts of capital uh, and capital providers who need to show an ability to invest you know, 25 to 50 to $100 million uh, a year, what I would call you know, standard or commodity low cost capital. It's not that you can't find a uh, million dollars, but it is, it is much harder without that, that pathway. So the ability to show scale, so not just the, the fact that billions of dollars needs to be invested in infrastructure in Puerto Rico and so much of that is going to be into uh, regional and microgrids and distributed generation and energy. This is a, a fantastic number and that represents scale, but it doesn't necessarily represent scale to uh, an investor unless he sees the next thing, which is an executable pipeline and transaction efficiency. Uh, by being uh, prepared and, and being able to show a visible pipeline of opportunities for investment, uh, you can you can do that. So we're building toward that with with this particular program uh, and transaction efficiency, which is the ability to uh, enter into a an investment process and uh, you know have a, a visible sight line to completion. Uh, in other words, you're not entering into uh, work with a great deal of uncertainty about the the outcome outcome of your efforts. Uh, and of course, the, the next thing we want to do is we want to begin to demonstrate momentum. Um, there's an English expression, uh, nothing succeeds like success. Uh, demonstrating momentum and track record, seeing other people 
uh, begin to invest in, uh, in Puerto Rico will lead to greater interest and greater comfort uh, for others doing the same. So we are, are trying to build that momentum uh, in small steps uh, through this program. So uh, preparation is key. This is what we're trying to, to again bring. Uh, whether you are interested in joining our program, join our program or not, uh, you know, we encourage everyone to, to seek advice. Uh, uh, free advice is nice, uh, and, but you know, find, uh, find the sources and, uh, and get smart before you actually engage. Um, understand uh, your own needs versus wants. Uh, this isn't necessarily obvious to, uh, to most people who are uh, just focusing on uh, you know, the, the resiliency, et cetera, that they, uh, that they want. Um, versus what they need. Um, this can uh, create uh, miscommunication and you know, mis misapplication uh, in discussions with potential investors or, and or lenders uh, down the road. So having a good grasp of, of what it is that, that you're actually trying to do in the first place is, is good. I, I don't want to be pedantic, um, but this is uh, one of those things that uh, developers of projects often get wrong. Um, being able to assess alternative solutions, I think, goes hand in hand with that. Uh, doing your analysis of, of whether uh, whether a battery of a certain size is absolutely required, or whether uh, it might make more sense to do something uh, within the the grid system, or whether it might make more sense to join with uh, a number of other groups in order to achieve your goals. Um, yeah, maybe there's a maybe there's a, a cooperative who can uh, step in and, and create the conditions that will satisfy your needs uh, without necessarily having to create your own um, your own project. Uh, understand the project risks and address them proactively. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is going into understanding. Um, we call it financial education, but technical assistance is also what we're providing, helping people uh, develop better projects, be prepared, understand and, and proactively work with the project risks. There are many more than most people understand uh, in relation to a, a given project. And right now, the investors and, and lenders uh, and, and others, counterparties, understand the risks of your project uh, better than you do. Uh, you need to understand them at least as well as they do. It's your project and you should know them better than, than others. These are one of, this is one of the things that we get at. Um, it's very important to understand uh, the requirements and the motivations of different types of uh, capital providers and you know, what it is that they are generally looking for as a, as a class of investors and also what a particular investor is specifically looking for. Uh, be organized and be prepared to respond. Uh, be proactive, uh, you know, anticipate the requirements and you will exceed the expectations. So I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the, the sort of financing options that most people are playing with in the, in the market right now. Uh, it would, be, it would be wrong not to mention that this program is uh, sponsored uh, in, in large part by a grant that we received from the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture under the Rural Business Development Grant Program. We, uh, we, we honor them and uh, we, we, don't, we do not market for them, uh, but we do want to, to mention that uh, USDA and SBA loans are some of the most uh, user-friendly and accessible uh, forms of capital uh, available in, uh, for most of Puerto Rico and uh, are absolutely uh, worth reviewing in terms of any sort of financing analysis that, uh, that you're doing. Uh, bank loans and real estate finance, the, there's a limited amount of bank loan and, and I would say uh, credit union loans available for uh, renewable infrastructure, uh, solar storage, uh, and others uh, currently. Uh, if you have a banking relationship, you, you may have access to, uh, to financing from a, a banks, but there as yet is no organized financing aimed at uh, uh, renewable energy uh, and distributed energy support 
uh, for, for residential or commercial, but there's a great deal of potential and there's a great deal of interest uh, amongst uh, the, the credit unions in particular. Um, most of the loans that banks have made uh, so far in relation to uh, infrastructure investment, whether it's uh, efficiency or distributed generation, uh, is, is generally done as a, an additional lien uh, on the mortgage. So it's really real estate finance. It's not uh, finance simply tied to the uh, value and performance of the uh, renewable asset or the, or the solar asset that you're installing. Uh, developer capital is involved and uh, available in Puerto Rico and uh, several uh, were done uh, before uh, the storm and several have been done afterward. Uh, but if you can think about this as, uh, you know, a Sunrun uh, or someone else would, would be in this category, but on the, on the larger scale, you've seen uh, Generate Capital and a few others have done uh, certain uh, loans, investments along a, a PPA lease. Uh, BOO stands for Build, Own, Operate. Uh, BOT stands for Build, Own, Transfer. Uh, this is basically relying on uh, third-party capital to come in and uh, build and own, uh, for the most part, the infrastructure that, uh, that you're uh, looking for. There are uh, certainly uh, advantages to this. It tends to be a fairly flexible uh, capital, uh, and in relation to solar and other things, it may take advantage of some of the tax attributes that are available to uh, investors that have tax capacity in the US, which uh, these things are more difficult generally to take in, in Puerto Rico. Uh, philanthropic impact capital, uh, if you have a, uh, a social uh, community center um, and others immediately after the storm, uh, they're still being built. The Red Cross uh, continues to, uh, to raise and, and deploy uh, systems through philanthropic capital. Uh, some of this is impact capital. Impact capital can provide a larger uh, potential amount of money. Uh, impact capital itself is is philanthropic, uh, philanthropic generally for profit capital. It can it can span a wide um, variety of uh, forms and structures, but it can also be very important. And there are a number of people. Uh, I'll just mention, it, including uh, the group Invest Puerto Rico, uh, who are looking at uh, ramping up the uh, attractiveness and ability of impact capital to come to Puerto Rico uh, in to focus on energy investments, among others. Uh, CDBG DR, uh, there are a number of programs that um, have been uh, posited, and uh, now that the funds have been released, they're, they're looking to get going. There is uh, one particular program in, there is one program in particular that looks to subsidize the installation of uh, solar uh, water heaters and, and, uh, and solar panels. Um, this is uh, definitely an area to uh, to be aware of. Uh, however, uh, we uh, we need to see that roll out, but that's coming. Opportunity zone capital and the structures that are involved, uh, the requirements. This is also another potential source of capital. Um, this money can come in. Uh, it'll have an interest. It'll have uh, a rate that probably is a, is attractive. Uh, but none of this is uh, risk-blind capital. They are all looking for well-organized, well-structured, uh, you know, easy-to-execute uh, transactions to deploy their capital, and we need to be prepared for that. Uh, the last thing I'll add here is that with the, the advent of the uh, electric cooperative law, uh, Leveraging the organization and uh, attributes of scale that electric cooperative uh, can bring uh, may be the right solution for your community, or electric cooperatives may be uh, you know, maybe something that you can connect with one of the groups that have have started up uh, as they mature, and they may be the right uh, partner uh, for your particular project uh, to include it within their their activities. So I, this is less of a financing option and, and um, you know, more of a partnership option for people to think about as they go forward. 
So we, we began the program to address a need. Um, Puerto Rico has uh, the underdeveloped skills and pathways and institutional capacities. Um, we need to uh, address that so that uh, Puerto Rico can create opportunities that are world-class and can attract investment, demand attention and attract investment. Um, there are uh, obviously many sources of capital that are available in relatively small amounts. We want to make uh, more capital available uh, in increasingly large amounts. The requirements of, uh, of lenders, uh, of different capital providers, different sources are uh, mostly unknown uh, to, to Puerto Ricans who are developing it. And I think that goes for developers, but also consultants and other uh, institutions in, in Puerto Rico generally do not have the, the background and experience to, uh, to support this. So we need to, we need to build this up, uh, build knowledge transfer. Um, so we think that the, the need for education and training with the direct as, uh, assistance that we can provide um, is, is clear. And this is where we are, are focusing uh, most of our efforts in relation to this program. Uh, the benefits, I think that the people and, and uh, Puerto Rico will get from, from this program, clearly access to the expertise and training uh, required uh, through our networks of uh, mentors and instructors. We have uh, you know, a world-class group with you know, decades, uh, perhaps hundreds of years of, of relevant experience in energy and uh, emerging markets and capital markets. Uh, there's very little that, uh, that you know, we don't immediately cover within the group and uh, we will bring in additional support uh, and expertise. Uh, we're looking to, to work on knowledge transfer and capacity building. Uh, so one of the things that we were particularly uh, keen on was beginning to build uh, our local team, but also extend the, the, uh, the, the training and cross training of the team and the groups. So, we're transferring knowledge uh, from uh, the world into Puerto Rico and about Puerto Rico uh, to the world, but we're also transferring knowledge and building capacity between groups in, in Puerto Rico as well. Uh, we found from the, the first cohort that, that some of the uh, most effective teachers uh, are the cohort members themselves. Uh, we want the groups that are coming through this program to become a model for others in Puerto Rico. Whether uh, whether the the others join as future cohorts uh, of the program, uh, or whether they're just uh, able to uh, see the success and the path and the steps that uh, cohort members have taken, uh, it provides a model um, and an inspiration uh, for others to do the same. Uh, we want to demonstrate a narrative of success uh, for the investment lending community. Uh, we want to change those perceptions and be able to show uh, well thought through, well organized uh, projects and investment opportunities and uh, begin to change the uh, perceptions of capital outside Puerto Rico and build the momentum we talked about. Uh, being able to access capital uh, is meant to accelerate and enable the transition to distributed resilient infrastructure. Uh, this is a obviously secondary goal, uh, but we also want to stimulate economic activity, create local jobs, reduce poverty, uh, create resiliency in the communities by, by focusing on these areas. So, um, at some point in here, I meant to uh, to hand it over to uh, to David and Valentina to, uh, to continue talking about the uh, the program. Um, this is probably as uh, as good a uh, changing point as as any. So, uh, David, maybe I'll uh, I'll let you uh, start talking here and take us through the summary of the program and uh, and through the rest. Okay. Oh, thank you, Tom. Um... So PRECAP, the Puerto Rico Energy Capital Access Program, uh, exists uh, to support uh, the, the combination of businesses, nonprofits, cooperatives, and um, we haven't had our first set of municipalities, but eventually municipalities, as they um, gain that, not only uh, go through that due diligence process, but gain that um, knowledge that's needed to fill uh, the gaps with respect to their project development timelines, how they're organizing, 
uh, how they're assessing risks and building their financial models uh, to uh, not only understand how their growth is going to be as an electric power startup, if you will, um, but also how that's going to impact um, uh, both their project from uh, an investment standpoint. So um, the program really exists to provide the, the tools, guidance uh, to help the projects really um, uh, get to the uh, real-time educational resources that are that are needed week by week. And we'll go through a little bit more into like a, a breakdown of the curriculum and a more of a visual so you can kind of see that. Um, and we have periods of like intensive training that where we, we bring in deep dives and workshops with respect to um, uh, to respect to financial modeling and different forms of analysis uh, in order for folks to be able to prepare their information memorandums and other required uh, materials. And so we do this, uh, we've, of course, since COVID, we've really adapted our program from being something that would have been partially in person and partially digital to now all digital. Uh, and so we've uh, structured our weeks uh, in different levels of intensity to keep the rhythm of the course uh, consistent as we go along 12 weeks. Um, and the goal really getting by ele week 11 for folks to be able to pitch their projects to potential supporters, um, investors, and, and partners. Um, and I think we can go to the next slide. Ah, great. Um, yeah, so I'd love to talk about our instructors. Um, we have a really good uh, group of folks that are both like, on island and off island to really uh, provide some of the, 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 the local contextual knowledge of how this market is developing to some of the best practices that have been happening uh, with respect to the states and more mature markets. Um, and so we have um, uh, we have Jose Torres, uh, who's a managing partner at, at Molner Capital, and he's been the founder of the Puerto Rico Opportunity Zone Fund. Tom, Tom spoke a bit to how Opportunity Zone funding uh, for the island could be a great resource to provide, uh, you know, good runway capital for about 10 years uh, to be able to support these energy projects. And so figuring out how to satisfy, and there's a lot of things happening within that, of course, and that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're exploring during the course. Uh, and he's been really great at helping to prepare our projects and provide more guidance as it, as it develops. Uh, Gabriel Perez, um, he is, has a number of hats, but notably also is working with uh, Aconair as the president there to help to develop um, more um, uh, policy and regulation and capacity building around renewable energy. Uh, he's also one of our board of directors. And so he's been really instrumental also bringing guest uh, speakers and other mentors and instructors in the network uh, to help our programs to develop. Uh, we have the pleasure of having Jose Humberto Roman as well, who's the principal of Jimena LLC and the former chairman and CEO of what is now known as the PR Energy Bureau. Um, so really been able to provide a lot of great context uh, and advice in, in approaching the, um, the, the, the regulation compliance uh, components to our projects. Uh, from the U.S., um, <clears throat> we have Jorge Rodriguez in New York, uh, who is a, for, a former global head um, uh, of, of infrastructure um, at, uh, at, at Deutsche Bank Group. Uh, and he's been really great at also helping to prepare the uh, projects for uh, their um, for not only for not only developing their their overall story, but then also really assessing the real risk profiles. And alongside of that is Edward May. I think we have a lot of a lot of folks on the call today too. So um, sorry if I'm you know I'm oversimplifying. I'd love to give everybody more time to introduce themselves if possible. Um, Edward May is a managing partner at um, Energy Intelligence Partners, and has really been helpful in helping us to think about how to structure our financial modeling, what assumptions to make, and what, uh, what folks are really looking for when they're assessing how to invest in projects. Um, and we've been able to really exchange some really great um, knowledge on what's happening here on the island, how that influences the way that we look at our financial models. Uh, Victor Rojas, who's a senior manager of clean energy finance at EDF. Um, and you know he's been super excellent as well in terms of really you know bringing the the, the knowledge and expertise of the, the clean energy industry from a, a perspective of such a reputable organization into thinking having our, our our cohort really look at the different ways they can access different forms of, of capital um, and also incorporate environmental impact into their um, into their, um, their, their, their project developments. And then we have uh, John Ravis as well too, who's been, um, uh, who's a renewable energy finance development advisor, uh, who has couple, who has, you know, all of the, all of these folks together have been individual and collective mentors to our projects. And so um, some providing uh, a, lo a lot of the, uh, the same kind of reinforcing principles around uh, the project development, looking at risk and modeling that. And so we've been able to create a lot of great notes and exchanges from our cohort and our mentors. Um, 
both in our boot camps, which are everyone together, and then during our um, kind of weekly um, one-on-ones. Uh, and so that's, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more of the overview of the program. I think our next slide goes into the virtual boot camp itself, uh, which is kind of how we started the program, and which is one of the ways to kind of look forward as you think about applying to uh, PreCap, one of the ways that the program will get started in terms of preparing your projects to start to get oriented and organized around these main topics. Um, we could uh, switch this uh, to the next slide. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So this is uh, this is just day one, um, just looking and, and really is a kickoff to a lot of the material that we also intend to prepare and, and, and make available online for folks as they consider applying to the program. And uh, Valentina will speak a little bit more to how we are going to achieve that and, and through what through what platforms. Um, and so a lot of the original agenda is really around um, really getting to know who are the stakeholders and getting a really good stakeholder summary of the Puerto Rico energy ecosystem. And I know it's changing as we go, but there's been a lot of great developments that have either, uh, and there's a lot of great context, with, especially with respect to policy. So understanding the, uh, the players in that regard has been something that um, our, our board director and, and instructor, uh, Gabriel, has been really great to, to, to give us a deep dive in on our first day for the virtual boot camp. Um, we also have Tom uh, and, and also, uh, um, Jose Torres as well too, and, and Victor going into the uh, discussion around how we look at different capital resources over the different project development cycles, if you will. You know, you might need, you know, it, it's one thing to, to, to prepare and organize the project for its, its full development, but it's also one thing to break that down into the appropriate phases that might be easier to access for some capital resources than others. So, you know, really getting an understanding of that stack um, the, and, and the different languages that come with um, pitching to those capital resources and just the different risk profiles and what those sources are looking for uh, is one uh, deep dive we start to get into and really still continue to develop throughout the course. Um, and then, you know, continuing that discussion um, in terms of, you know, being able to match with those resources and understanding a bit more about the risk, risk profile of those, um, uh, of those potential resources is Porque yo creo que en, en, la, en, en el cosito cabe. Eh, Sorry, I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Okay, great. Um, and, and yeah, just really closing with that to just say really how that informs everyone's individual project plans. Um, and that is like one aspect where we really just start to get into how we're tracking the performance. We have required, um, of course, um, uh, required documents and um, learning objectives throughout the program, but that also coincides with everyone else's um, team goals. And we wanna make sure that we can support that in a way that's, uh, that's very integrated. So that's, um, that's one of the main uh, ways in which we get started with the boot camp. And if we can go to the next slide, I think we can see just how this looks like as a as an overview, it might be a little bit difficult to see unless you have like a, a big screen here. Um, but I'll, I'll kind of go over it. You can see the different colors of kind of beginning, middle and end. And that's kind of where we have those intensive uh, sessions. Um, we would hope for those to be in person. Uh, and, and, and we believe that that will happen <laughs> for the next cohort for sure. Uh, but at the very least, they've been times where we've been able to combine um, and, and spend a lot more uh, workshop and hands-on time and bring in different mentors uh, to, to touch upon um, the milestones of those segments of the program. And so um, uh, I think, and so starting in week one was the virtual boot camp that we had seen. Um, and, and this is for the current curriculum. We have this uh, ending um, around the 30th of June. So that's kind of our week 12, just to give you a sense of where we're at. We're in about week seven right now. Um, and that is the sessions where we have everyone as a full cohort. So that's where the entire program is there together and exchanging and, and working together on different workshops. Um, for the rest of the, the middle of the programs, we, where we start with that financial modeling and risk profile analysis. <clears throat> we do that through the digital sessions. And so um, we have our general assembly meetings that are combined with one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, both with the, the cohort and their mentors, and then also with us as the staff to check in on how they're doing in general and, you know, how we can either uh, adapt some programming, provide additional support, uh, connect folks within the network, um, really try to provide more of that tailored um, that tailored uh, educational model for the program. And, and with our current cohort um, being pretty small, it's able, we're able to do that, but um, we've done it with uh, larger numbers as well. Um, 
And so, yeah, we've passed the midpoint at this, at this point as well, too, with everyone's kind of, you know, really getting a sense of how long this process takes. And, you know, we understand the fact that folks are at different tracks, uh, even if they're programs or projects at a certain level of readiness. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, I won't um, speak too much to that um, without like, you know, taking any words from Valentina's next talk. But um, I, I will say that, you know, we are adaptive to that and, and our one-on-ones and mentors that are, that are paired individually with each teams uh, also really allow for uh, some of that progress to be made in different spurts within the uh, first and second half of the program. So, um, so as I was saying, the kind of the overall themes, if you can't really read the headings, are really around kind of financial uh, readiness, organizational readiness, uh, and, and understanding risk, um, and starting to uh, get more into more details of modeling that. And then we kind of build into not only uh, finalizing those models, but putting that into the form of uh, the kind of feasibility study uh, and, 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 and due diligence documents that are needed in order to go and access different capital uh, resources. And so that's going to be different for each person, um, but the overall themes are to actually get that to the finish line so that by week 10, week 11, we are actually pitching to those folks, inviting them and helping to actually helping to not drop off after that point, but actually help you guys to close uh, or solidify further relationships with the folks that we're able to, to bring into the final um, pitch, pitch weeks and closing celebration. Uh, so, um, and yeah, we've got some social events in there too that we are trying to do in digital and we're, we're iterating on that as we go. <laughs> so I'll let the uh, next slide go and pass it over to Valentina. Thanks, everyone. Bien, seguimos por acá. David, te voy a pedir que me dejes acceso a compartir mi pantalla, por favor, porque me dice que no, no tengo acceso para mostrar la experiencia eh, de nuestro curso online. Una de nuestras experiencias eh, principales, sabemos que estamos en un momento eh, complicado en relación a de que no nos podemos ver uh, personalmente, sin embargo, eh, esa es la razón por la cual nosotros hemos desarrollado eh, esta capacidad de poder ver eh, nuestros contenidos de curso en la Academia Online de PRICAP. Eh, David, todavía no puedo. Uh, yes, I think Tom is hosting, so we'll need to, uh, he'll need to st uh, stop sharing so that you can sh then share. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's, we're almost there right now. I think you can give it a shot. It should work. ¿Lo ven ahí? Sí. ¿Are you seeing it? Wait. Okay. I see Val Valentina Garamuño. Um, I changed the settings so that, uh, that you can present. Bien. ¿Están viendo la pantalla ahora mismo? Yeah, still the same. ¿Are you seeing the screen right now? No. no? I, just see, I just see your name, Valentina Garamuño. Mm. Oh. It worked in dress rehearsal. <laughs> okay. Uh, David, si puedes compartir tu pantalla tú. Can you share your screen, David, with the with the Fundación Page to explain it? Um, I can give it a shot. Yeah, no problem. Let me yes. uh, get it prepared. Bueno, yeah. en, lo que, en lo que David está compartiendo su pantalla, les voy a contar un poco sobre eh, qué esperar, ¿verdad? De esta experiencia de pre-cap online como tal. Como David les comentaba, tenemos 12 semanas a través de las cuales cada grupo va a ir madurando sus distintos proyectos. 
eh, con, la, con el acompañamiento de los mentores. Vamos a asignar, cada grupo va a tener as, asignado eh, por lo menos dos mentores que los van a acompañar en sesiones semanales a través de todo el proceso, ¿no es cierto?, de ir eh, logrando cada uno de los objetivos del de proyecto. Eh, los objetivos que vamos a encontrar en el proyecto, algunos de ellos son, como David les estaba contando, conocer el ecosistema energético de Puerto Rico en profundidad, presentar y estructurar su proyecto, ¿verdad?, a las distintas audiencias. ¿Cómo yo puedo presentar mi proyecto, por ejemplo, a un grupo de inversores, por ejemplo, a un municipio? ¿Cómo puedo eh, presentar mi proyecto a una comunidad? ¿Bien? ¿Y cómo lo puedo presentar entonces internamente para poder eh, alcanzar los objetivos que tenga en el proyecto? También vamos a madurar aspectos que tienen que ver con el modelado financiero. Eh, también vamos a desarrollar eh, distintos modelos. El modelo financiero, por ejemplo, es uno de ellos. Y vamos también a poder entender en profundidad cuál es, eh, de qué se trata el, el tema del acceso al capital energético. Ahora David está mostrando cómo es la interfaz eh, que vamos a tener en nuestro curso online. En el curso online eh, vamos a tener distintas eh, presentaciones, vamos a encontrar horas de videos en los cuales vamos a profundizar en cada uno de los objetivos, por ejemplo, acá eh, estamos viendo te, eh, distintas, eh, distintos videos que están relacionados a las presentaciones de sus distintos instructores para que los puedan conocer mejor, puedan conocer su background y también puedan entender eh, cómo se pueden apoyar mejor en sus mentores y en sus instructores. Eh, y vamos a tener entonces también horas de videos relacionadas con cada uno de los objetivos, por ejemplo, cómo accedemos a capital financiero, cómo, eh, cómo somos capaces de desarrollar un, um, un modelado financiero para un proyecto, eh, desarrollar también lo que es eh, la organización, el modelado organizacional de mi proyecto y las distintas herramientas. También vamos a encontrar... Eh, Distintas actividades de assessment que vamos a ir desarrollando para ver, por ejemplo, en cuál es el estado actual de mi proyecto, qué necesito para llevar mi proyecto adelante en el momento en el cual me encuentro, ¿verdad? Otra cosa importante es, eh, por ejemplo, vamos a hacer un, eleva un elevator pitch. ¿Qué significa eso? Vamos a, a, a aprender a cómo describir nuestro proyecto de una forma bien, bien sencilla de tal modo que cualquier audiencia lo pueda llegar a entender. Por otro lado, eh, David está aquí apuntando en la parte de foros. Le puedes dar ahí, David, foros. En el caso de los forums, eh, nosotros vamos a tener acceso a hablar con nuestros distintos compañeros para poder ser capaces de eh, pasar información, hacer preguntas y poder crecer mutuamente en colaboración con las personas que están tomando el, el seminario, el, el, el programa PRICAP con nosotros. También en la sección de descargables vamos a ser capaces de bajar material eh, ya previamente establecido para entender distintos conceptos que tienen que ver, por ejemplo, eh, modelado de riesgo financiero, vamos a tener ejemplos, vamos a tener casos de estudio de proyectos similares al nuestro, eh, vamos a tener también acceso a distintos modelos que podemos utilizar como ejemplo, templates. De, por ejemplo, si, si ustedes nunca hicieron un, un modelado financiero, pues les vamos a proveer unos templates para, eh, para poder desarrollarlo respecto a ese ejemplo como tal. Y, y de cada uno de los objetivos, ustedes van a tener entonces un template guía, ¿no es cierto?, donde ustedes van a poder eh, apoyarse. Otras de las cosas que vamos a estar haciendo, eh, además de tener estas sesiones semanales con nuestros mentores, eh, es que vamos a tener también una sección colaborativa semanal. Esta sección colaborativa semanal, ustedes van a presentar cuáles fueron sus avances a lo largo de toda la semana anterior y van a poder ser capaces de escuchar cuáles son los avances de sus compañeros también. Este es un momento 
sumamente interesante porque nos permite construir nuestros proyectos en colaboración y poder fortalecernos de cuáles son las eh, fortalezas de los compañeros de equipo también, de cuáles son las fortalezas de los otros equipos para yo poder ir construyendo eh, cada uno de los proyectos y entonces ser capaz de fortalecerlo a un punto que yo pueda ser capaz de presentar ese proyecto a cualquier audiencia. Así es que seguimos entonces con David. David? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I'm trying to, um, I think I, I went in uh, through more of the, the preview form. Uh, I was trying to get to the download section to show. Where would you like me to, um, to, uh, to open next? Sorry. Ok, pues aquí lo que está mostrando David es la interfaz de cómo vamos a ver cuál es la experiencia del curso online. Entonces, aquí nos vamos a encontrar, por ejemplo, con distintos módulos en los cuales tenemos la presentación de, de los instructores, tenemos también la introducción al ecosistema energético de Puerto Rico para saber cuál es el estado actual de la infraestructura energética en Puerto Rico. También tenemos, por ejemplo, eh, toda la sección de assessment en la cual vamos a ir eh, trabajando eh, con respecto a los objetivos. Por acá estamos viendo uno de los videos que nos explica de qué se trata el modelado financiero. Bien. Y también eh, una sección de self-assessment. O sea, en este caso, eh, por ejemplo, estamos haciendo un assessment de qué tipos de, qué tipos de capital vamos a poder acceder, cuál, cuál es el mejor tipo de capital que mi proyecto puede acceder. Y entonces, eh, a, eh, a medida que vamos avanzando, vamos a ir viendo entonces cuáles son esas eh, necesidades que tiene mi proyecto para poder trabajarlas tanto internamente con mi equipo como con mis asesores, ¿verdad? O mis mentores, y luego entonces también trabajarla colaborativamente con el resto de las personas que están trabajando en equipo conmigo. ¿Bien? Ok. Eh, y con eso entonces terminamos con le, el, la presentación de, de nuestro, nuestra academia online. Aquí lo que David está poniendo son los distintos ejemplos que tenemos con, con eh, modelado financiero, con eh, análisis de riesgo de mi proyecto. Todos estos templates ustedes los van a poder tener disponibles eh, dentro del programa. Bien. So, terminamos entonces con esta sección y seguimos con Tom. Ok. Thank you, David. Tom. Okay, uh, let's let's get it back to uh, to the other screen. Okay, um, so I think um, well, I mean, I can do this, and I think I'll I'll, I'll hand it back to, uh, to to David in a second. But by the end of the the program, uh, we basically expect every team uh, to have. Uh, updated their business and the project plans, uh, detailed financial projections. Uh, so, you know, the documents that uh, we want, financial models, be able to uh, provide uh, project description and memorandums of information, um, you know, risk uh, analysis and, and matrices. Um, and uh, if, if it's relevant, um, we, uh, we also uh, work with a, uh, a software that can provide uh, Uh, preliminary uh, solar design uh, proposals uh, that can help uh, expand the the credibility and understanding of your your information and uh, we want everyone to have a very clear understanding of uh, where they are going to uh, seek capital and why so these are a uh, simple form but these are the specific objectives for uh, everyone who joins the cohort Uh, okay, so we're, uh, we're going to actually ask our uh, cohort members uh, for the first cohort to actually say a few words. Uh, I think uh, Jim Baus of Industrial Chemical Corp, we actually have his uh, pre-recorded because he couldn't join us today. 
Uh, so let me play this, and uh, then we will uh, we'll move on. Uh, I believe Angel Zayas is with us, and uh, C.P. Smith from the uh, Cooperativa Hidroeléctrica de la Montaña and Unidos por el Cuado uh, is, I don't know if he's on yet, but we'll, we'll get to him. He is trying to join. Potential pre-cap participants. As you familiarize yourselves with the program and evaluate your likely participation, I'd like to offer my experience to date, just over the halfway point of the first cohort. My company is a local manufacturing facility looking to add energy resilience and diversify our offerings, taking advantage of our property and location. Phase one of our Tayaboa Community Microgrid project involves the installation and operation of one megawatt of high performance solar PV generation and storage offering reliable, robust, and cost-effective clean energy to the neighboring businesses and homes of the Tayaboa Patio Pinoyas. Our standalone distribution system will ensure resilience and scalability while offering complete independence from the government utility. Being a solar PV rookie, the pre-cap -pre program has clearly defined the steps required to make this type of project a reality. It establishes the information required to properly execute industry standard documents required to access capital, with the ancillary benefit of identifying and answering technical issues, of which there are many. It is reassuring to have expert advice and guidance an email or call away. The ROI on this type of interaction is off the charts. For instance, financial modeling is one thing, doing so for solar PV and storage is completely another. The mentors are all experts in the respective field and are excited to help. Also, the interaction with the other cohort participants and the cooperation therein is also greatly beneficial as we all offer our own strengths. If your goal is to develop a renewable energy project in Puerto Rico, then I highly recommend the PreCap program as a springboard for not only learning how to access capital, but to also become experienced in the technical, project management, and financial nuances of this field. All right, great, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Uh, so um, I don't know. Uh, let me just uh, quick check, uh, Angel. I, I know you joined earlier. Are you uh, are you still with us? Do you want to take uh, yourself off mute and uh, and say a few things? I can, but I cannot be able to be in video, so I can I can speak no problem. I don't know why it says that I can't start video. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't allow me to do the the video. Oh, okay. Hmm. No problem. Okay, well, <clears throat> everybody, uh, good to to see some faces and uh, some people that I know in the in this uh, Zoom meeting, which is great. Uh, just to let you know, uh, Angel Sayas, AC Engineering, we are an engineering uh, company since 2000 that we work in a lot of electrical projects, uh, permitting and, and this prepa. And since 2007, we've been involved in uh, every project from small to large scale uh, on solar system. Uh, in this case, and I know what it is, uh, there's a project, this one, but it can be with microgrid that uh, we have a first phase already under in the process. However, it has, it has taken so long, like four years. Typically, this type of projects can take a lot of time if you don't know the tools and the uh, herramientas para help you in getting some finance. And sometimes I've seen projects that uh, you have designed, permitted, but then because you don't have the financing, it's just a waste of, of time and you were not able to make that project happen. I've seen that a lot of time and what I like about this uh, pre-cap is that it allows you to learn in a real life. That's what's happening with me, uh, that I'm more of the engineering side, but I wanted to learn the financing environment and understand what these people look on the other side so that I can be effective when bringing a project either by myself as a developer or in hand to hand with another developer to make this happen. So what has been happening during these seven weeks uh, is that we've been going through the process, learning from the sponsors, 
they have a lot of experience that are really giving us advice and making sure that we can have the necessary documentation and, and the information that they are really looking for a project. And this is not only a training, is that you need to put some time and effort because as you develop the tools and the documentation, you are also learning and putting the documents so at the end we can have uh, the financing that is really needed for any project. Uh, so my recommendation um, for everybody that is here, take a look at this uh, seriously and also if you have a project under development, that is taking time and you don't know where to go. This is the, the training that you will need to help you with mentors and guide you to, to the end so you could have different alternatives for financing or grants or any other help that you need for the project. The other benefit that I see from the cohort of the PRICA is the networking. The networking that we develop uh, is uh, the different team members, the instructors, Tom and his team is really excellent. And at the end, uh, we we'll finish as a big family that we can help each other in the future from our projects. Okay? So that's that's what I have, and I really enjoy being in the pickup. Okay, so thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Oh, sorry. Hopefully, you can still see this. Uh, I don't see CP on uh, the call. I know he uh, sent me a note, sort of apologizing that he's just uh, caught up in a number of things, uh, running a nonprofit and starting up a uh, the first uh, electric cooperative in Puerto Rico uh, is uh, time consuming. Uh, so we will, uh, we'll, we'll skip over, I think, uh, CP and, uh, and sort of move on. And maybe uh, David, uh, I, I wasn't sure which one of you or Valentina wanted to talk about the, uh, the application process, but uh, we, uh, we have that here. Sure, I'll, I'll jump in here, no problem. Um, so yeah, um, we're our, our applications for second cohort, which are starting at the end of the summer, the 31st of August, uh, we're starting those applications on the 1st of June, so next week. Uh, you'll be getting an email from us. Uh, if you've registered through the Eventbrite, we'll, have, we'll be able to email you guys the links, including the recorded session uh, of this, um, and uh, you know, more information. And that link will also be made available uh, on our website. We're currently updating the application to make it a little bit easier for you guys to fill out uh, over time. Uh, and so, and we'll be actively starting more inform uh, an informational outreach um, campaign just to let more people know about this. So if you and or folks that you feel that meet the criteria of the program and uh, we can talk a little bit more about this as well too, um, uh, are interested in applying, you know, feel free to also reach out to us. So you will get links out as well too for um, some one-on-one -on -one sessions. And so that'll be a little bit more information towards the end. Um, but we will be actively reviewing all the applications as they come in. Uh, we are supporting um, communities right now through uh, that are based in rural areas so not not in the metropolitan areas projects won't be qualified for this round uh, we're looking to apply to other funding sources so we can open the scope of that maybe later this year uh, or definitely for next year uh, but for right now this has been mainly focused on rural community development and uh, energy projects within those bounds and so pretty much just not metro area uh, Caguas, uh, Guaynabo, Carolina um, I think I said Caguas, yes. Uh, those there in Bayamon that don't really um, count in that way, but pretty much everywhere else on the island. And so we're looking for more uh, projects that fit those geographical restrictions. Um, there are, we'll also send more information just about the breakdown of participation costs for the program uh, and some of the ways in which those costs could be um, subsidized uh, for, uh, for, for participation after application. So that's something we can get into further detail as we learn more about you and your project and, what, uh, and how you guys are looking to grow um, over time. 
Um, and as we said, we're the deadline for um, the, the program, I'm sorry, is the, is the 31st of July, and we're starting session two on the 31st. So sorry if I misspoke there earlier. Um, so we'll have a, a solid two month period to be able to outreach to everyone, to answer some questions and some one-on-ones, and hopefully get you guys into cohort two. Let's see. Do you have the next slide there? Ah, yeah, and I pretty much kind of talked a little bit uh, uh, about that. But um, I, I think, um, uh, Valentina, did you want to speak a bit more to just the uh, surveying and, and academy content? Sí. Eh, bueno, en este momento, eh, Tenemos una sesión de preguntas. Eh, si quieren escribir sus preguntas en el chat, si alguno, alguno de ustedes tiene alguna pregunta. Eh, teníamos por acá una pregunta de cuál es el costo del programa. Eh, nosotros les vamos a estar haciendo llegar por correo electrónico una eh, más información respecto a todo lo que está relacionado con los costos, con lo que es elegibilidad, eh, unas encuestas relacionadas para que nos cuenten un poco más sobre su proyecto. Eh, pero si tienen alguna pregunta puntual, pues eh, siéntanse en libertad de hacerla en este momento. Eh, también les vamos a estar haciendo llegar una, una encuesta eh, relacionada con este, este webinar, las percepciones que tuvieron sobre este webinar, y también eh, para que tengan la oportunidad de setear aquellos de ustedes que necesiten más información, que tengan la oportunidad de tener una reunión uno a uno con los miembros de PRICA, ¿bien? Eh, se les va a dar la información para que podamos hacer una reunión eh, de media hora, una hora, que, eh, vía, vía eh, web conference, para contestar sus preguntas particulares que puedan llegar a tener. Tenemos una pregunta por acá. Ok, uh, Sandy pregunta, ¿cómo me puedo comunicar con Valentina para orientación y dialogar so, eh, sobre mi proyecto? Sí, Sandy, eh, con muchísimo gusto te vamos a enviar por correo electrónico la información del proyecto, eh, de todo lo que está relacionado con el programa y vas a poder ser capaz de setear una reunión conmigo y con, el, con los miembros de PRICA para eh, que me hables un poquito más sobre tu proyecto y poder orientarte mejor sobre la elegibilidad del, del nuevo cohorte que vamos a estar comenzando. La, la, el nuevo cohorte comienza el 31 de agosto. Ok, también en relación a lo que es material gratuito, vamos a tener disponible eh, material gratuito en eh, la academia online, ok, para que ustedes puedan entonces acceder a cierta información relacionada con el desarrollo de infraestructura eh, solar y el desarrollo de lo que es el acceso a capital de forma gratuita, esto como una forma previa de poder entender eh, todo lo que está relacionado con el programa PRICA. Bien, esto también se lo vamos a hacer llegar por correo electrónico. Eh, y tenemos otra pregunta por aquí. Jan nos dice que la presentación estuvo muy estructurada, y concisa y clara. Muchas gracias, John, por tu feedback. ¿Alguna otra pregunta que tengan para nosotros? Ok, fantástico. Realmente ha sido un placer para nosotros poder compartir con ustedes en este momento y estamos bien entusiasmados de conocer un poco más a fondo sus proyectos eh, y poder apoyarlos en este camino a seguir creciendo estos proyectos de infraestructura renovable en Puerto Rico que tanta falta nos, nos hacen para poder ser resilientes y para poder ser cada vez más autónomos desde un punto de vista energético. Tom? Yeah, thank you. Gracias, Valentina. Um, let me just, for, for the handful who, uh, uh, whose Spanish maybe uh, hasn't kept up with Valentina, um, we, uh, we're, we're providing uh, emails with additional information uh, and, and slides 
Uh, I, I missed it if Valentina said it, but we do intend to uh, translate these slides into Spanish and make them available in Spanish and English. Uh, and we'll provide those to the email that you registered. Um, uh, she, I, she mentioned the office hours, one-on-one -on -one calls. We'll set aside some time uh, for you to schedule. We'll provide a Calendly link uh, so we can schedule time to talk. Um, Valentina mentioned uh, we're going to make available uh, some content on our Academy platform. Uh, and we will be asking you uh, to complete uh, a very short webinar survey uh, as feedback going, go, you know, along with the email that you will get uh, by the end of the week, week so, uh, or by, by Monday, let's say. Um, there was one question here um, that I didn't want to dance around. Um, someone asked, uh, what the cost of the program is. Um, the, the cost of the program is mostly uh, borne by uh, the grant that uh, is provided by uh, the, the USDA. We, we do ask each of the participants to uh, contribute to, to program fees in the amount of uh, $2,000 for the program. Uh, however, uh, as David mentioned, uh, we are looking at uh, different ways uh, in order to potentially subsidize that. Uh, there, are, there are some people that we're talking to that may be able to do that. Uh, we also have uh, talked to people about uh, doing, doing an online fundraiser to help uh, you know, raise or, or set off that fee. Uh, if, if someone has a good project and uh, you know, they, they just can't come up with the uh, uh, the $2,000, uh, you know, we'll, we'll work with you uh, to make sure that uh, that you can still join the program. Tom, I'm here, I'll be fast. I don't have my video, but just to let you know, everybody, this is, this 2000 is really minimum to what you will be getting out of each of the instructor and the process uh, is valuable. It's really minimum, I would say, uh, less than 0.5%, okay? Uh, if you convert that, that could be 30,000, 40,000, whatever it is, because what you are getting out of the instructor and the experience is more valuable than that 2,000. And if you have that benefit that, that also you could help others, uh, that's that's positive too. But I just wanna let everybody say, uh, know that because that's my experience as an engineer and I'm learning a lot. Thank you for that unpaid advertisement. Um, no, gracias, Kanga. <laughs> That's very helpful. Yeah, you, you no one talked to me just just for <laughs> reference. That's how it is. Okay, so <laughs> gracias. Um, I've left up on the screen uh, the the information for uh, for the website and uh, the email address for information. Uh, if if you want to reach me. Uh, I'm just Thomas at fundacionborincana.org, um, and uh, you know, likewise. So feel free to to reach out. Um, I've actually noticed that since we've been on the uh, on this uh, presentation, that uh, two people have uh, filled out the contact form on the website. So um, we'll be sure to make sure that uh, that we reach back out to you as well. Uh, there are a handful of new messages, so. Uh, we do have uh, five minutes left, um, and oh, and David put it into the uh, into the thread. Um, okay, yeah, no, uh, no, no new questions. Uh, a few, a few, <laughs> a few private messages of the jokes. Um, so I won't, uh, I won't read those out. Uh, if, there, if there's anything anyone else would like to know, uh, you know, we do have a couple of minutes if you want to uh, put in uh, a question in the, in the thread, uh, or uh, I'm not sure if we have, do we have a hand raising function? We could, uh, we could do that and, uh, and take people off mute if they wanted to ask a question. No? Okay, this uh, is being recorded. So amongst the things that we will provide you, uh, we will uh, make available a, a recording of this uh, session. So you'll have the opportunity to go back and, and watch your favorite parts. Hi, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. I have a question. So let's say you don't have a project 
in mind um, a clear thought out project as of yet? Mm -hmm. Is there still room to mold and and develop that project as you're going through the program? Uh, if you need a certain level of, of kind of preparedness or a project, it, the project would definitely be molded. Um, I think Angel will tell you that, that you know, we've bent him a little bit already. Um, but uh, this, is, this is more of an accelerator than an incubator. Uh, we, we have talked about uh, you know, potentially uh, having uh, some workshops uh, or other things scheduled um, it, it just in general for people who are interested in, in starting up projects. Um, and I've, I've run these before, um, hopefully to get you a place where, where this program would be of value. Um, to you in your project, but I would say um, if you uh, you know if you have a I, I don't know exactly kind of what project you're thinking about, but if you know if you want to develop a microgrid or you know you have a small business uh, or a manufacturing business and you want to uh, see if you can uh, you know build a, a, a you know, solar and storage to give yourself more resiliency. Uh, and you have an, uh, have an idea of, of what you want to do and, and why, um, then you know, this could help you put together the information and the analysis and other things to attract capital to that. Um, we're not just looking at, at you know, large scale or, or microgrids, we're, we're looking at how businesses develop in, uh, in rural areas. Uh, that's the, that's the uh, genesis of the, of the grant and, and the, the, the capital. So uh, we're, we're, staying, we're staying true to that, you know, projects and others in, uh, in rural areas as, as they're defined and, uh, and you know, working with uh, uh, new and emerging uh, businesses in, uh, in Puerto Rico. Um, I've probably danced around your question, but provided additional information as well. So uh, I, I hope that helps. But if you, if you really want to know more, um, just uh, when we send the link, click a link and let's, let's set up a half an hour and we can explore it in more detail. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Terrific. Uh, gracias a todos.